then I would say, look, a career is not, is not uh, a sprint, uh, it's, it's a long uh, distance run. And, and watch out not to condition your professional happiness with the end station. Don't condition your professional happiness with the end station. Because you may be, you may be in with some frustration. It would be a pity that you come at the end and say, my life was a failure. Uh, and you wait your whole life to know that. Uh, I think what you have to do is to, to make sure you enjoy the journey. You have to do what you like to do. You have to do uh, it with your colleagues. Uh, but like the journey. And, and, and it's not a straight line. Sometimes you're going to have setbacks and all. See perspective, detaching home. Uh, but enjoy the journey. And you will get where you want to get. With all these different stakeholders, you face a lot of criticism. How do you deal with the criticism? First, uh, don't take it personal. That's definitely, don't take it personal. Um, we criticize because we are a sizable company. Um, uh, and I always said, um, I say, say that high trees catch more winds. We do. We are also a company that are part of people's lives active part of people's lives, we're not somebody, no, our brands are on the table, they touch, etc. We're a company that is understood in its value chain, hence also criticized by every step. Mm -hmm. um, and yet criticism is, 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 is meaningful in the sense of, uh, 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 first, it keeps you humble. I. And I repeat it because it uh, really still so relevant to me is this what I learned from a professor from India. I wasn't an IMD. Uh, detached involvement, which which is actually saying, hey, you you you're the main actor of your own life. In other words, you're on the scene, acting your life, and you're always at the same time be capable of being on the scene and yet at the same time observe yourself from the public. Which gives you perspective, gives you context, gives you a little bit of relativity. Take, uh, there's nothing worse than taking yourself too serious, uh, because you can, but you can judge better. And, 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 and that has to do with many situations where you say, hey, and you, you feel overwhelmed and all that. Two steps back, observe, watch out. It's a little bit like these terms like, count, before you react, count to one, two, three. It's a little bit the same thing, but it has, a, in my eyes, a, a better, a, a better um, explanation of how it works, the dynamics of observing yourself at the same time of being yourself. Welcome to What is Good Leadership. I'm looking forward to an inspiring guest, Paul Buke, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Nestle Group. Nestle is one of the largest companies in the world. The company employs approximately 270,000 people around the globe. In 2021, the company had sales of 87.1 billion Swiss francs. Nestle sells over 2,000 brands worldwide and operates 350 factories in 79 countries around the globe. For over 150 years, Nestle has been committed to providing safe, quality nutrition. The company sells in 186 countries around the world. Paul Buke has been chairman of the board of directors at Nestle since 2017, prior to which he was chief executive officer at Nestle from 2008 to 2016. Overall, he has a career spending more than 40 years at Nestle, where he began his career in 1979. Beyond his current role at Nestle, he is Vice Chairman of the Board of Directors at L'Oreal and Chairman of the Community of Chairperson at the World Economic Forum. He is also a member of the Board of Trustees at Avenir Suisse, member at JP Morgan International Council and Co-Chairman at 2030 Water Resources Group. I wish you an interesting and insightful conversation with Paul Bucher. Mr. Bulger, thank you so much for taking the time. My pleasure. 
You've been working for Nestle for almost 40 years. What is fascinating you about Nestle? What fascinates me and motivates me in Nestle is that with Nestle we can do a lot. We can move a lot. And the second dimension is that in Nestle I can be myself. I can live up to my values because Nestle has the same. So I feel really home and uh, there's no tension there. So these two dimensions are really motivating. What are the Nestle values in this case? The Nestle values have to do with respect. That's how we have defined it internally. Respect for, uh, for, for, for yourself, which gives this, this uh, uh, you can depend on Nestle and we live up to what we promise. Uh, uh, respect for the, for the others and that's where trust comes in. Respect for diversity. We are a very diverse company. We have 100 nationalities in the headquarter. And, and, but a very important one also is the fourth one, the respect for the future. And that's where the long-term thinking of Nestle comes in, where we build into our being that, that responsibility for environment, for example, uh, and, and next generations, uh, and investing for the future. So all that comes together. And that has shown, I have seen it in Nestle. Uh, I started with Nestle uh, a few years ago, uh, <laughs> and that was in a time, I was in Peru, and it was in a time where there was political instability and all, and, and I've seen so many companies leaving the country, Nestle stayed. Mm -hmm. and, and that is, what a better example of these values in the sense of, hey, we come into a country, we commit for the long term, and we, we show, you show loyalty to us, our, uh, our, our employees and, and, and our consumers, uh, we show loyalty to you, we stay, in good and bad times. Um, so, and we, we do care uh, for, for what we stand for, and uh, we want to live up to that. Um, and I've seen it over and over and over and over again. That mm -hmm. was very motivating, that's why I'm still there in Nestle uh, mm -hmm. also. Uh, so, yeah, and, and never a boring moment. Mm -hmm. What made you choose Nestle in the very first place when you applied at Nestle? Very simple. Um, I had a good job, but um, my wife and I, we wanted to go uh, abroad. And mm -hmm. when you're young, you want to see new horizons and all that. So, and you have to do when you're young, it's easier. And uh, so, and I, uh, I knew uh, about Nestle, how they are uh, present in the world. And so I called them and I said, look, uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm young, uh, I have no experience, but the, <laughs> my wife and I, have, we have a lot of enthusiasm and we want to go uh, for that experience and, and maybe Nestle could be an opportunity for, 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 for us and maybe me for you. And uh, that's how it worked out. Mm -hmm. You lived in many different countries. Did you feel home in all of them? We always said, uh, when they asked me, where did you uh, like the most? Because we have lived in, and we always say, and it's true, I always preferred where I lived. <laughs> Why? That's how it is. I mean, you build your life, and uh, and it's an experience. But it's an experience you built. So we we so um, and and every country has given us so much in different aspects. And it was not always easy. I started with saying hey, it was a difficult time at the time there, and sometimes you have to learn another language or uh, yeah. And and uh, at the end, I had the easy part because I moved from a Nestle to a Nestle, and my wife and it, that's really teamwork. Uh, I don't have my career, it's our career, uh, mm -hmm. definitely, when you're uh, moving around like this. But my, m it's my wife that had to take the kids out of the classroom and say, hey, yeah, you're going to lose some friends here, but we go somewhere else and it's, you're going to make new friends, or, or, or go and know where the good uh, 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 produce was to, to prepare meals, and to build that all up again was more my wife. And, that's why I say teamwork, and it worked well. But it has given us so much experiences, and 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 also the so, some tougher experiences. You learn a lot more from tougher experience than the easy part. So now I uh, I would do it again. And may I ask, how did you motivate, especially your family, to move again and again? I can see how it is motivating for you yeah. to follow a great career and have opportunities, but. How do you keep your family motivated? Look, um, the younger they are, the easier it is. So we started very young. The first movie we did was with my daughter, and she was two, and my son was three weeks old. 
He didn't say no. <laughs> so, but then you start to be, it's part of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, always been like that. Um, and I, I think also something that helps, as my wife and I, we were together moving out. It was not that I had a job and all of a sudden somebody asked and they uh, go home and they say, would you like to? No, no, we actually looked. Uh, and my wife has lived also in, in, in Africa uh, her first six years. Somewhere it's in the blood. <laughs> but, but it was us moving out. What has helped too is when, and it was not always easy, uh, you, 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 your kids, they lost some friends and there was some tension sometimes and emotions and things like that. Depends so much how the parents are. If he would have made a lot of fuss and emotions and, and uh, et cetera, and uh, yes, because you lost some friends, they give you 15 teddy bears, uh, you actually you actually use problems. You can also, that's how it is. You're going to be richer, you have your friends on the other side, and now with social media, it helps. <laughs> As from uh, 17, 18 years, we stabilize them. They go to, and that was in our case, Belgium, for university, mm -hmm. because then you have to stabilize. and. When they're 17, 18, 18 uh, yeah, they fly out a bit and they have go their own. They start to spread really their wings. And that's how we did it when we were young. That's how it went for them too. And I have my kids all over the place now. Yeah. Uh, my daughter lives in Chile, but the other one now in uh, Chicago, and the other one in Luxembourg. Uh, it makes family gathering uh, quite a feat. <laughs> Let's take a look at the professional side and motivating people and motivating people to work with you in your teams. Mm. Do you have a secret about that? Well, first of all, uh, motivating. Actually, leadership is all about motivating people for the right things and, and making them enthusiastic about it. And, 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 uh, first of all, you have to have the right purpose. And, ex and, and have a clear uh, expression and articulation of that. So everybody should identify with that thing. So that's what, when you look in the mirror in the morning, you say, hey, I'm proud to work for Nestle because of what Nestle stands for. Th that's something you have to convey permanently. So for a second, values. And we have people, so many people are loyal to the company or like the company because at the end of the day, and uh, uh, we share the same values and, and, and et cetera. And so, and putting and pulling people behind that and, and making them feel part of it and, 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 and really useful and meaningful and, and I think that's how it works. I mean, uh, there, there's no secrets. I mean, uh, uh, and, uh, and also frame it well in the sense of, hey, uh, yeah, that's the hill to take. Somewhere you have to, I'm saying, look, uh, we, we can discuss, uh, but, but guys, at the end of the day, somewhere, it looks to me that's and so you know that motivates me a lot mm -hmm. and they see that i think also listen to people uh, be yourself and authentic also all these all these forced the egos and all that we are in nestle there's a fundamental thing in nestle that i always have uh, given a lot of value i always felt nestle people we are there for the company and not the reverse. We are there for the company and not the reverse. The company is not there for your ego. Yet, at the same time, Nestle, Nestle because of that, allows you to realize yourself, to feel good, to feel that you, you're building your, your, your life. Uh, with it's not a sacrifice, but you're there for the, uh, for the company. And I think that's not a bad thing to sometimes remember some people about that. Um, because, and that makes really the culture of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, um, that's why we are sometimes, yeah, we're proud of the company. And by being proud of the company, proud of being part of it. Mm -hmm. What makes Nestle's value so special? that they're very straightforward, very simple, very common sense, but very explicit, very lived up to by the people, uh, gluing the people together. We sometimes say, hey, it's a company, yeah, but it's strange though, it's true. You go to a market or a country and all that, it's like family. It's true too when you're an expat and you go somewhere, it's true that you're family because you left your other family behind, not your direct family. But 
uh, so yeah, I feel that's 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 special. I I'm, I I hear and listen. I see uh, we're not so unique in this, but we share it. We embrace it. What we have there, and uh, it's not a given. You have to you have, you have to work on this. You have to chew on this together, and uh, you have to talk about it. Mm. Um, but it's something that is really, I would say, very, very important and instrumental for the company's success. You've talked about how you shape the culture in your position as a CEO and what you can do to shape the culture. What did you do in your position as a CEO and what did you do or what can you do in your position now as a, a chairman of the board of directors? There's continuum. Um, First of all, the same company, uh, that's for sure. But, but the difference there is when you're a CEO, you're, I call it hands in, and nose in, and hands on. And when you're a chairman, you still have the nose in, but hands out. And um, I have been privileged to be able to do that because I have a, a very good CEO who does that. and and. and and, and, and we complementing each other quite well, I, I feel. I hope he says the same, but I think he, he does. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but you see, um, and, and that works well then, uh, because somewhere, hey, I've done it. I, uh, so I know the company in and out, so I can be a good sounding board for him. Uh, he came also from the outside, so that helps somewhere uh, to, as I mentioned before, uh, I feel I'm there for the company to serve. So, and, and his success is my success. So I try to be smart and not stupid. So I make him successful. I'm successful, and um, yeah, and it, and it and it works. So uh, I moved into it, and saying it was uh, it's obvious and all. No, 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 no. This I'm 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 rather an operational guy, and I love to be in the trenches. I my whole career almost I was in countries, and so by nature I I have a certain affinity to. But look, yeah, with the years, you, you, it's easier to take some distance, and yeah, it works well. What do you do if you don't agree, especially with strong people that you have surrounded yourself with when you were CEO, and with strong people that you're now surrounded in your board of directors? Well, if you don't agree with strong people, they have their arguments. Mm -hmm. And when they have their arguments, we listen, and then you listen to each other, and then you make a distillation of... of, of what is actually best for the company? Uh, and, and, and there's nothing worse than, than, than because of personal tension and, and ego or not admitting to, to, or not showing flexibility to do uh, wrong things. I mean, it's just not very smart. So uh, if you say you have strong characters and smart people, normally you can get to a distillation if they identify themselves with with the strategic direction of the company, with the values of the company. If there is that alignment, then normally whatever difference in opinion is only enriching. You've made the transition from CEO to being in the board of directors, in your case, the chairman of the board of directors. What can you recommend to people who follow that path in doing that transition? Well, I mentioned it before. You have to learn to hands out. All the rest is there, um, uh, still valid and all that. But but give space to the space you have to give to the CEO and all that. Uh, don't think about legacy. Mm -hmm. When you start saying my legacy, it's it's actually going against my other principle, which is you're there for the company, not the reverse. Uh, and legacy is past. Now think about the future. That's where you're going to live. Uh, so, um, no, I, uh, I, I would say, look, um, uh, takes distance, uh, be involved, knows in, um, but your job is different. And your job is actually to, 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 to be a sounding board, to support, to make uh, the, your management successful, to make sure in the Swiss dimension, to make sure that the company has the right, strong, value-promising strategy that the company has a very well articulated how it's go th going about its uh, behaving and action, which is in our case is this creating shared value, that we are there for all stakeholders. 
and having that balance uh, very clear, and also to have a very well explicit purpose. Uh, for us, it's very clear uh, uh, because that's the glue that brings together uh, the people of the company. That's the glue that uh, brings together all different parts, also the external parts that are part of your existence. And um, that's 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 our job. That's my job. And and then also make sure that you have a good board. I think uh, a good board uh, a good board is not about governance alone. It's part of, it's the obvious part, apparently, that's, uh, but also having a good board. What is a good board? I think a good board is, 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 is a board where the people, because of their complementing experiences, backgrounds, insights, um, because of that complementarity of professionalism, uh, etc. They can ask all the right questions that are relevant to the company's success and strategic direction. And for that, you need then also have a board with characters, personalities that speak up, that do identify with the strategic direction of the company, but that do complement each other. And for Nestle, that's finance background, sure, mm -hmm. international experience. Uh, uh, people who really understand the idiosyncrasies of all the countries we are living in. East, West, South, North, uh, and not only by having read a book, they live there, or they have experience, or they are originally from. Um, uh, then uh, we we are more and more science driven. Really, so, so, hey, some science <laughs> insights is is quite useful. Digital, so and that is evolving because the externalities are evolving. So and a board has always these refreshing element possibilities man, because some board members roll out and it, it gives you opportunity to to bring somebody else in with some new cap capabilities, and and well, yeah, that's my job to make sure that happens and I'm not alone in this. Uh, uh, but but uh, uh, actually, the board composes and uh, itself by itself. Uh, it's not my personal decision. I've, I'm quite instrumental in that, but but still, so it's fascinating, and to be able to do that for the company where you have been linked with for so long, and uh, so it's just evolving, and it's another way of being useful. You've mentioned getting the different parts together, bring them into a core. How do you do this in in an organization that is part of society, where we have moved in the past from a focus on maximizing profits in the, in the past, now to a more ESG-oriented organization and more stakeholder or shared holder, a, a broader approach. How do you manage it in your company, in, in, in well, Nestle? I, I didn't have to manage it. We never were as a company like Nestle, 30, 40 years ago, we were only thinking about profit maximization. We were not even there. We were, a, 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 a true, I mean, speak out of, I have seen it. 40 years ago, I started and I saw it. Uh, was not about, staying in Peru at that time was definitely not profit maximization. Being still with five factories in Venezuela is definitely not profit maximization. It is combining things. And that is what we call creating shared value. It's um, creating value for shareholders. Sure, that's how you can then also uh, justify and finance your future, support uh, your investments for the future and all that. But also creating value for society at large, which is your consumers, your employees, uh, your, your communities you work with, the farmers with whom we work. And I've seen it firsthand. And that was 40 years ago. 40 years ago was when this all profit max, uh, um, maximizing uh, was, was in. We were not there. And 15 years ago, we, we pronounced this, we articulated that in creating share value. We, live, we, we have done it intuitively, um, but, but we have articulated it in this way and we started to also frame it, uh, measure it, and hence we have this ESG, stakeholder capitalism, all going and converging into the same space. That's not competing with creative share value. It's the same thing, say it differently. And it's good to see that there is so much company now really believing, convinced of that. So no, it's, um, 
it's not we have to manage the change. What we have to do is to manage where we are and make it more measure, because the world wants to see that measure more, so we are engaged there. Environment has jumped on the scene big time, and it's, it's, it's rightly so. The food systems, we are linked with food, that livelihood of Nestle is food systems. They are challenged. We have to, we have to re-engineer the food systems. We want to be part of that. And that is multi-stakeholder by definition. Well, we committed to that. Net zero. Regenerative agriculture. And these are words. Yeah, but how do you translate that operation? How do you operationalize this? How do you make this part of your daily work so that every step you do, that converges into meaningful results in that direction? So, uh, actually, uh, very challenging times we live in, but also very rewarding. May I mentioned that what makes me somewhere proud and also motivates me is that we can move something with Nestle. All goes in that direction. With all these different stakeholders, you face a lot of criticism. How do you deal with the criticism? First, uh, don't take it personal. That's definitely, don't take it personal. Uh, we criticize because we are a sizable company. Um, uh, and I always said, um, I say, say that high trees catch more winds. We do. We are also a company that are part of people's lives, active part of people's lives. We're not somebody, no, our brands are on the table, they touch, etc. We're a company that is understood in its value chain, hence also criticized by every step. Mm -hmm. um, and yet criticism is, 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 is meaningful in the sense of, uh, uh, first, it keeps you humble. But that's the world. There is, on the same facts, different angles to see things. And I think we have to stay humble in that sense. We have our convictions, though. So we should not be tossed all over the place by and... No, no, no. We speak out and do things out of conviction, but with a sense of uh, relativ uh, relativism also, because sometimes criticism um, can create some r new dimension of prioritization sometimes, uh, because it is important what other things. Uh, what other people think. And we adjust sometimes things that are not going against our beliefs and, uh, and convictions, but that we feel, hey, this is something that is really, that matters. So, uh, now I think it's, the it's a good dynamics of society now, and social media accelerates things, makes it more, uh, more intense, and, and hence, uh, but also social media allows you to connect. So you can, you get more, 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 more um, criticism, apparently, intensity, but allows you also to answer, to connect, and to, to, to convince a little bit, or to put your arguments across. And I think we have to do that more in, uh, in our company. Why are you optimistic about the current times and the current changes that we see in our society? Well, you see, perception may be, hey, we're living in difficult times and all that, but uh, and we, the, the good old times kind syndrome because we have selective memory. We think the good old times because, it, no, 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 wait. Uh, life expectancy, uh, the possibilities. Uh, the last uh, uh, 10, 15 years, uh, uh, 500, 600, 700 million people went out of, uh, uh, if you see it worldwide. Um, the, the signs, the answers, the need for answers is more intense, but the answers are possible, much better than before. So are we not living in times we may be conditioned with what's happening now, a little bit the intensity of, of, of conflict and all that, but, but are we not living in times of um, unprecedented challenges and yet at the same time unprecedented possibilities of answers? And if I see uh, what we're talking about and companies like Nestle that we, are, we, we have these dimensions of possibilities of doing something about it with, with, with a scale, uh, then I feel we are, we are privileged. But we are only privileged by the fact that we assume that possibility and that responsibility. Um, so uh, I think we are we're living in the best of times, in spite of all. As we come to the close of our conversation, I would like to ask you the final question. What was the best advice that you ever got? I. <laughs> And I repeat it because uh, really still so relevant to me is this, what I learned from 
professor from India, I wasn't an IMD, a detached involvement, which, which is actually saying, hey, you're, you're, you're the main actor of your own life. In other words, you're on the scene, acting your life, and you're always at the same time be capable of being on the scene and yet at the same time observe yourself from the public, which gives you perspective, gives you context, gives you a little bit of relativity. Take, uh, there's nothing worse than taking yourself too serious, uh, because you can, but you can judge better. And, 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 and that has to do with many situations where you say, hey, uh, and you, you feel overwhelmed and all that, two steps back, observe. Watch out. It's a little bit like these terms like, t count before you react, count to one, two, three. It's a little bit the same thing, but it has, a, a, in my eyes, a, a better, a, a better um, explanation of how it works, the dynamics of observing yourself at the same time of being yourself. And is there an advice that you can pass on to the next generation? On a professional level, I yes. would say, uh, yeah, um, a career, because you feel that sometimes with youngsters and say, hey, how do you get to that kind of CEO? Or, um, then I would say, look, a uh, career is not, is not uh, a sprint, uh, it's, it's a long uh, distance run. And, and watch out not to condition your professional happiness with the end station. Don't condition your professional happiness with the end station. Because you may be you may be in with some frustration. It would be a pity that you come at the end and say, "My life was a failure," uh, and you wait your whole life to know that. Uh, I think what you have to do is to to make sure you enjoy the journey. You have to do what you like to do. You have to do uh, it with your colleagues, uh, but l like the journey, and, and and it's not a straight line. Sometimes you're going to have setbacks and all. See perspective, detach involvement. Uh, but enjoy the journey, and you will get where you want to get. Thank you so much for your time, and thank you so much for these insights. My pleasure. Thank you very much.